Hey everyone, figured it was time for a uh, an update, what with the reptile show having come and gone. <coughs> Alright, I successfully managed to sell all my baby lizards, so 17 in total between beard dragons, crested geckos, and a single day gecko. And what you're looking at now, this is the, the lizard that I decided to keep because it's the one that's missing his arm and there was another dragon too that I was going to keep but I decided not to uh, simply because it turns out that this one and that one were both males and I figured I didn't need three male beardies because I also have Eli so I decided just to keep this one and um yeah, so it's it was it's a little bittersweet. Um, this tank, used, you know, my basement used to be crawling with baby beardies, and now it's just this guy. And what's this? Oh, another bearded dragon. Only this one uh, is one that I actually bought at the show. This is a female. And she's a. A red, double red, or something. I can't remember. I'd have to look at the. I have it written down somewhere. But she is absolutely beautiful. Look at her. And I originally thought their tail was shedding, and that's why it was that color, but apparently that is its natural color. So yeah, she's my new female. Alright, now moving on. Probably the most unexpected acquisition would be this uh, loggerhead musk turtle <coughs> and uh, you know I've been trying to stay away from aquatic animals but uh, I saw these guys there and I couldn't say no I love musk turtles and mud turtles so I had to have them I'd like to get him out He's not cooperating. So this setup here, it's just a tub, one of the tubs I had my beardies in, uh, and it's just temporary. Uh, the, the plan is that in order to avoid water changes, man, he's getting angry. In order to avoid water changes, um, he will live with my mud turtle, Gamera. And in the likely event that they don't get along, I do have a couple spare aquariums I could set up. But this is just for quarantine. Look at him, look how cool he is. And he's doing good. He's already eating and, you know, I've been giving him crickets and mealworms, superworms, turtle food, pretty much anything I put in there. Yeah, pretty basic setup. <clears throat> well, that's going to change. <clears throat> now I left with uh, six baby crusties. And came back with one, and this one is not mine. I actually traded. So this is a, I don't know the morph. I know it's a pinstripe though. But um, I traded my giant day gecko for it. My baby giant day gecko. The guy said, uh, I said, would you be willing to trade for that crested gecko? And he says, really? And I was like, yeah, I just really don't want to bring a day gecko back home. <laughs> I'd rather bring home another crusty. So yeah, I don't know if it's going to end up being a male or a female, but either way, it was it's a good trade uh, because I can certainly breed it when it gets older with 
the two that I already have. Okay, now moving along, this is a Miami corn snake. And uh, I'm a bit surprised that I came home with a corn snake. This is my actually my first ever corn snake. And I know they're a good, you know, beginner snake. I don't know, I just never ended up with one. Um, I've always liked the Oka tea corn snakes as well as the other naturally occurring uh, phases, color phases. This guy's actually in shed. <clears throat> but this is a Miami corn snake, and I don't ever see these guys around at the shows. This is a naturally occurring morph, if you want to call it that. Which I think is, is uh, more interesting than the man made ones. Although there are certainly some really beautiful man made color morphs. So, yeah, there, Miami corn. In shed so I can't wait to see uh, after he loses that old skin what how what his paint job looks like oh, and his water dish the uh, my main objective at the show as far as stuff to take home was a bull or a pine snake and sure enough I got myself this beautiful female bull snake <clears throat> and I weighed her last night she was uh, 300 something grams I can't remember but anyway it puts her at my second biggest snake now after the ball python look at her I love bull snakes and pine snakes patufus genus gopher snakes so it's great to finally have one I had turned down a, uh, a pine snake at the April show and I regretted it so this was my number one goal and I got her and she just she already shed she had some retained shed on her too but I managed to get that off and um, she was real huffy and strikey and the first night she was here and it was a little bit alarming but she didn't bite me and after shedding she seems to have calmed down <laughs> well, there you go, she's gonna put on a show for us. I had her out last night and she didn't do all this. But I just reached in and grabbed her. I was lingering this time around. From what I've read, uh, the bull snakes can be very cage defensive so I think that's what we're seeing here it's an impressive display for sure but I don't think she'd bite me even when she strikes I don't think uh, I think they're all just bluffs and now she's in a 30 gallon um, aquarium just one I had laying around she's gonna get a bigger tank too I'd like to get her in a 40 she is bull snake I haven't come up with names for any of these new additions yet although I'm leaning on Priscilla for this one I don't know why it just came to me uh, but the bearded dragons including my the, uh, the one with the missing arm as well as the new crusty and the turtle and corn snake none of them have names yet so I've got some work to do on that Hide back. Oh, 
Yeah, she doesn't play around. All right, I'll, I'll do that after I uh, put the camera down. It's intimidating, that's for sure. I'm not used to my pet snakes acting this way. My hog nose puts on a pretty good bluff, but geez. You can see why in, these wi in the wild these guys are mistaken for uh, rattlesnakes. Oh yes. There is another new pet. This one is my wife's doing. Because as you can see it is not a reptile. It's a rabbit. And I really like rabbits. I had rabbits for a lot of years. Growing up I had a dwarf rabbit. Uh, for nine years actually. And so I'm not opposed to rabbits or anything like that. But it wasn't really something on my list I guess you could say. Because I got enough to take care of. But uh, he's a cute little thing. We got him for free. Uh, and uh, we already had the cage here. It's a decent sized cage. So I guess it's nice to put it into use. It's been sitting empty for a number of years. And he's not too friendly yet. But he's working on it. He's cute though. He's, I like his two-toned uh, paint job there on his face. It's like having two different rabbits depending on which side you look at. He's cute. <clears throat> so yeah, another mammal in the house. And let's see, I guess that about does it. Oh, I should mention that um, my tarantula died just out of nowhere. She had uh, molted about a week ago, and it was the first time she molted in the two years that I've had her. Now, I imagine that means she was pretty old, but I don't really know. And uh, she's the, she was my first tarantula, and my only tarantula. And I think I'm going to get another one, probably for the same cage. I also bought a smaller cage. I didn't buy it, but I actually traded for it. And it, that's sitting over here. And that would be a good one for a, a tarantula. Or a, another arachnid. So I'll probably fill both those up. If not with a spider, maybe a Pac-Man frog or something. I don't know. But I would like to have at least one more tarantula. I was so bummed when she died. I mean, she molted. And uh, she was so shiny and pretty and new. And then she just died on me a week later. I would guess old age, but I don't really know. Hey, Eli, what are you doing? Alright, so I guess that about does it for this video. I'll leave you off here with the musk turtle chowing down. Uh... Let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that. And I'll see you next time.